Okay, tonight we got Gerard, and he is now an official school owner, and he's going to tell you all his life story. He's going to tell you all how he went from where he is to where he is now, how he opened his school, and this is me and Barbara from Instagram. A lot of y'all know about the school blueprint. A lot of people have doubts, wondering, does the school blueprint work? Um, if I don't know anything about it. So I'm not going to take up a lot of time, but I'm so proud of Gerard. Uh, he passed his school inspection. So without further ado, Gerard, I want you to share, just starting from A and just stair step what you was doing before. And I got a list of questions that people have already DM me today. So just take off. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, first, I want to, uh, Thank you, Chen, for um, inviting me on the call tonight. Uh, I, I count that as a privilege and an honor. Um, yeah, I, I'll go straight in. I'm going to go straight in. I'm from the East Coast, um, originally from Delaware. Uh, I moved to Michigan um, back in 2008. I'm a gospel rapper, gospel artist. So I, I go all around the world traveling, going into detention centers and prisons and, you know, doing different concerts. Uh, I did a 50 city tour called life and death tour, kind of helping people who was hooked on drugs and who was incarcerated, giving them a better way. So um, I found myself selling drugs, being heavily involved. So I kind of got out of it. I was pronounced dead on arrival on October 31st on Halloween day. So that's how I was able to continue to go in and share my story. Um, I had, if you've been following Chin or anybody had no into my chin you would hear him say that story sell that's the number one thing that you got to really have in business is is a story and a platform to elevate you in and when i was pronounced dead on arrival that kind of got me into different positions and places and i began to speak and help other people but i realized that i was missing something i, I realized that you know i missed that 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 drive that feel of of like, like Rick Ross was saying, every day I was hustling. I was, I mean, I was selling ice with Eskimo if I could. And, and that was the type of thing that I realized that I found myself in um, the position. So I began to do things smarter. So I began to look for mentors. You know, you can learn from two ways. You can learn from mistakes or you can learn from mentors. So I was learning from too many mistakes, getting into too many bad habits. And I, I had a son and, uh, for me as a man, I would speak that the only thing that can slow me down was either a man or a woman, you know, and so, and that's what, I mean, either a child or a woman, forgive me, I, I, ain't, I ain't no man chasing, a child or a woman, and my son, he changed my whole life, and I'm like, I gotta do something better for my seed, and I'm like, okay, what's something that I can do, that I like to do, that I can do, I can take it anywhere I go, and I started thinking about that, and I realized that, you know, um, my cousin talked, you know, I saw him cut hair and he was making a lot of money and, and he told me he wasn't selling drugs. That's all he was doing. I'm like, there's really money in barbering? I'm like, really? And he was like, yeah, it's money in barbering. And then I just began to sell on the side, do different things. And I realized like, man, this dude bought a car. Then he turned around out of house and now he's full-time barbering. So I, I began to take it seriously. I moved to Michigan in 2008, met my wife. And when I met my wife in 2008, you know, I, I had a passion. I had a passion of music and I had a passion of cutting hair. And I realized that, you know, with the both two, what was my product? And I didn't realize that. I'm thinking that the phase was my product that I was servicing the clients with. And I thought the music that I would empower and impact people was my product. But the more I began to grow, I began to realize that neither was my product was people and in the barber industry is more of a relationship industry and it's a people's industry. It's a trust industry. And so I begin to have conversations and then people just begin to open up and talk to me. And, and I, I went to barber college in 2009. And when I went in barber college, 2009 here in Michigan, I began to, to realize that, Hey, I didn't know a lot about barbering. And I will, I, will, I, will, I will learn certain things, but then I will look at, you know, the things that was missing. And in order for me to be able to be an entrepreneur or somebody that's successful, I wasn't so-called looking at the things that was there. I was focused more on the thing that wasn't there, the thing that was missing, 
and I begin to gravitate to that. Like, why is this Mr. Why I'm not learning this? Why why I'm not getting this information? Why they're not teaching me this? And I'm driving now. Remind you, I'm dr- I'm in Delaware. I'm in, I'm in Michigan, an hour and a half away from the school. So I will get up every single day at six o'clock in the morning to drive to Detroit, Michigan, which is an hour and a half away. And I had that much hunger and drive and passion for me to go to school, to get my license, to get that done. And so I went through three vehicles. I had a vehicle blow up on me on the process. At this time, it's just me and my wife. We moved to Michigan. There's nobody that I know. I have no family here in Michigan. And so it was just me trying to change my life and get a better uh, uh, advantage in life and be successful and, and kind of break that mold of what they say about the black man or the black race or about a man. I, I was trying not to be a statistic. And so and with that, I drove and then my wife ended up being pregnant and then I began to carpool with someone. And then the person I was carpooling with, you know, he began to drop off because everybody was like, hey, you no, know, G's pretty good at cutting hair. He's he's nice at that third, but this guy wasn't getting up praise. But I would uplift him because that that was my ride. I needed to get up there, and so. But then I end up, you know, losing my ride, and so I will I will hitchhike or I will pay. You know, people double the amount of money what they will uh, pay for for me to get there. So long story short, I end up, you know, I. I 2009 to 2015 that was like about four or five year gap it took me to get my license i failed the state board test once and i and i i gave up i like nah I, i'm gonna do it again so i went back and took it again the second time and and at that time i failed again when i saw that failed on that screen it paralyzed me i'm not gonna lie it paralyzed me and i'm like I'm not doing this, forget all of this. I might as well just go back and, and cut in the shop and forget all about it. And so I started with cutting in the shop. My wife was pregnant with her second child. And I'm like, we don't have no money. I, I can't jeopardize going to school and doing this an hour and a half away. Remind you, that's very key, an hour and a half away. So I'm driving an hour and a half away and, and cutting, making money. And, and I'm just I'm just getting frustrated. And I'm like, man, I want to go back to school. I, I, I got this far and and I almost and I almost quit, and I and I was watching uh, YouTube's late at night. I'd be watching YouTube's, just kind of sharpen my craft. And the millionaire barber pop up, and I saw his story, and I just like watched him, and I just studied him. I just followed him, and I'm still cutting hair in the shop, and just that in the third, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be in this position one day. I'm one day I'm gonna meet him. One day. I'm I'm a I'm a link up with him because this guy he he showed me step by step you know what I mean his his life story and he showed me that that there was no excuses he cut out every single excuse he went to jail he he was incarcerated he was moving bricks he was doing everything underneath of the sun and he still was able to 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 get to school and I'm like man here I am you know you know with, with this little issue and this problem and this man right here then made 17 million within years and he just elevated and level up. And I'm like, that's what I want. So I, I begin to have a model. I didn't have a model in front of me. And so Shin became my model and I began to watch it. I read the book and I, and I, and I saw the story and I began to, that, that was my vitamins, you know, that was my fuel. So I ended up going back to school and going back in the freshman class and freshening up on my skills. And I went the next day and I passed the state board after my third time and I didn't give up. And that was like the best feeling of my life. It was the, it, it almost matched the same feeling that I had when I opened up this school. And so I began to uh, buy Chin program. You know, it was in 2015, 14 when I actually saw it, but I didn't move on, on it until 2019, four and a half years later. And I'm like, man, I, I know that I need to be doing this. I know that I, I need to learn from this guy. But after a while, after a while, I realized like, you know, but it's just me. I don't got no help. I don't got nobody in my corner. There's no school around me. It's a perfect market. 
the, the, the closest school was the school that I went to, which is an hour and a half away. And so I'm like, it's a no-brainer. After I start seeing those numbers that Chin was showing up on the screen, I'm like, okay, let me know more about this program. And so I begin to get into the program, you know, and Chin began to counsel me and coach me and tell me to do what I need to do. I went ahead and, and opened up my shop. I, I, I kind of put it on the back burner. I opened up my shop in 2015, 2016, you know, uh, and, and I began to make money. You know, my first year I made 15000 My second year I made 55000 And then um, my third year, my mom passed away. And that kind of like took everything out of me because like my dream, my goal was to buy my mom a mansion, buy my mom a house. You know, every year I was like, you know what, mom, I'm still pushing. I'm going to get you that house. I'm going to get you the house. And when she passed away, it just, I went to a state of depression, depression. And with that, you know, I'm like, man, I'm going to leave a legacy because I, I had to take everything, all of my finances, everything that I have to get her a, a proper burial um, because we didn't, she didn't have life insurance. And, you know, as in, in my community, we, we never taught that language. We never th thought about leaving inheritance and never thought about leaving um, things for the next generation. Or we never talked about death. You know, we just, I don't know why black people just think we can live forever. I don't, I, I don't know. But, you know, it kind of it kind of hurt me. And then I'm like, you know what? I got to keep on pushing for her regardless. I got to keep on pushing for her. And I, and I got to leave a legacy. I got to change the bloodline. I got to change my bloodline. All it took was one Michael Jordan to change his whole bloodline. So I had to think about it. I, like, I got to change my whole bloodline. And I began to take it serious. I called Chin up. I said, Chin, I'm ready. You know, I, I'm ready to take this by the horns and I'm ready to go. I began to have, you know, issues with my spine and I had health issues. And I'm like, man, I have nothing to leave my children if something happened to me. And I'm up here standing behind a chair. I'm cutting, I'm cutting. And I'm just like, I'm wasting a lot of time here. Well, I could be really making money. And I'm looking around. I'm like, it got to be another way to make this happen. And so I, I went to the school. I went into the school. When I went into the school, I realized, like, man, this is hard. But then when I got the program from Chin, he had step by step by step by step by step. And me and my wife, we tackled that. We looked at that. And we begin to pick it apart. When we picked it apart, he had down to the school policies, the student checklist, the uh, enrollment, and you know, laws and regulations and rules and had everything that needed to to have according down all the way down to the financial aid and and if you need uh, information, if you need a loan, if you can't get a financial aid. I mean everything that 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 I thought that wouldn't be things that I needed help with was within this whole system, um, the blueprint of the school. And not only that, it had a business plan. And before this, I was trying to get funding for my barbershop. But now I was like, no, I want you to go to a different direction. So I tried to get an SBA loan through this company. And when I showed them my business plan, they were like, whoa, who did this business plan? You know, and you know, I, I, I'm like, no, I got people in high places. Just put it like that. And he like, man, he's like, can I use this business plan for other people that's in your profession that I can help with them? I said, Oh no, no, no. This is this is this is this is strictly for you to get me my money so I can open up my school. That's it. After that, we can talk numbers. So, you know, I went ahead and, and showed them, but I felt good because it was three people who are in loan positions, bankers and other people, they saw this business plan, they were like, Man, this business plan is, is immaculate. So you you must pay thousands and thousands for this business plan. I'm like something like that, you know. Let them know that I put a little bit of skin in the game and everything. So so I, I did that and 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 man, doors just begin to open. So this pandemic it kind of messed me up. I had to I had to I had to really think like, am I going to pursue the school or I'm gonna stay behind a chair in my barbershop? And I began to look at the options. I weighed it out. And I'm like, you know what? It's a perfect time to make a transition right now. And so I began to close, close my barbershop. And I looked for a building. And before the pandemic, I looked for a building in March 
And actually, the guy had been chasing me down all the way since January. But I said no because I, I, I was focused on barbering, but on uh, having a barber shop. But here in March, I opened up the school. And when I opened up the school, and I mean, I went to the landlord and got the keys for my school in March. And I told him I'm I'm still in the contract at my barber shop, so I don't want to leave that. So, kind of, if you got somebody already in mind, it's fine. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and be loyal to my to my previous owners. And he said, just because you said that you want to be loyal and that you honor that high, your integrity is that high, I tell you what, I will erase the months if you come in here and you only have to pay $500 a month until the end of the year. And I'm like, oh, snap. And this was a 1,200 square foot, already operated, everything furnished. It used to be a salon. It had the front door, back door, classroom, locker rooms, everything for school was set up. And I'm like, okay, God, I get it. You pushing me to it. So this happened in March. Pan a week later, the epidemic came, that, that whole pandemic came. And I'm like, how am I going to get money to get this done? And I, I began to draw unemployment. So I took all of my unemployment money. Everybody else are buying Jordans and buying bottles of Moet. They're flashing. They got their arm with $100 bills all on their arms you know, stretching out, and, and I'm like, I took every penny of my unemployment and put it in my business. I, I went uh, on overseas, overseas and ordered barber chairs, and, and I just began to take my old stations. I had a friend, I cut his hair and his friend's hair, and he custom, he worked at custom cabinets, and he began to custom all of my cabinets. And I, 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 we paint, we stayed in there late night. I had a friend who, who does drywall and electricity. I paid him out by cutting him and his family haircuts. I used my skills of fading, cutting, and tapering to get me where I'm at right now. And I, it reminded me about a story in the Bible when Jesus uh, had to break the bread and feed 5,000 of, of fish and bread. And he asked the disciples, what do you have in your hand? He said, all we got is a fish and, 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 and loaves of bread. He said, that's all you need. And, and, and I, I began to think about what was in my hand, a clipper and a comb, and that's all I need. You, you'll know how to make money with what you got once you uh, realize uh, 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 the potential that you have on the inside and the drive. And I, I began to procrastinate so long in the past, but I realized that the worst nation in the world is procrastination. And so I began to get that procrastination out of me Every single night, Chin went live. I'm, I'm on live. Instagram, I'm on live. I'm listening. Got my earbuds in because my wife nudged me like, hey, you got to go to sleep. What you doing? I'm like, oh, nothing. The whole time, I'm like, man, this is good stuff. I'm like, whoo. I'm here taking notes with the nightlight. And so I began to do the order. I didn't do anything different. And I will watch videos, and I hear testimonials all the time from from Chin, I would go on his YouTube. I didn't watch every last one all the way down to the Steve Harvey Barber. And I'm listening at everything. And I'm like, man, they, Chin is not making people say this stuff because everybody's story is different. And I'm like, man, I want to hear this person's story. I'm like, man. And I'm looking at this person got into it the same time that I was going to get into it. And they already made millions and they already got their knockers. They, they got their government fund. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. If I don't start now, then I'm going to be behind the wheel saying that I need to start. And I am not going to be behind the wheel no longer. I cannot watch another video like you guys are watching and saying that I need to start my school. I'm going to start my school today. And that's what I did. I started it. And, the, the you know, I'm going I'm to speed you up to, to right now. So on the 7th, that was a couple of days ago on Tuesday, uh, in my state, they couldn't they couldn't come down physically to do an inspection. Now, mind you, we we are uh, we had to have two instructors to open up, and it was the day of of the actual. Um, it was the day of the inspection, and the, and the instructor said, "Okay, do you have do you have two instructors?" I like, "Yes, I got two instructors." At the time, I did not have two instructors. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm gonna put it in your hands. If this is the right time and the right season, you will you will find me an instructor. Cause if I do it, I pay for it. If you do it, you pay for it. So I got a call and and there was a guy hit me up. He's 
No. He's like, yeah, are you still looking for an instructor? And I'm like, what? And I got to go live in two hours for uh, for me to meet my, my state board inspection to go virtual. And I'm like, yeah, how you get my number? I'm, he like, oh, man, somebody gave it to me seven months ago. And I was just like, you know, i like, man, let me hit G up and see if we still need it. i like, yeah, but listen, I don't mean to put you in a crunch. I'm going to take care of you nicely. If you can text, if you can text me your, 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 your paperwork so I can, you know, have it up on the board. He texted me his paperwork, his instructor's license. I made a copy. I had a copy machine at my house. I took a copy machine. I put I put that paper in the, in the thing, and so the lady said, "Okay, we need uh, to see your two instructors." I'm like, "Here, it, here it is, right here." And I didn't get my second instructor until two hours before I had to open up. Two hours before I had to open up, but I didn't stop moving. I kept on moving like I already know it's going to happen. And because if I stop the momentum, then I'm going to get ran over. And I I like no, I'm gonna be on this train. I got to stay on this train. The lady, uh, she's like, you know what? You know, I, I had to have my lettering six inches high on the board, on the window. And I'm like, six inches. So the guy was able to put it on the, on, on the door the night before. And when he did that, the la- it still wasn't six inches high. The lady was like, well, you know what? The lettering is not six inches. I'm like, man, this lady is tight, man. You know, and... She like, I used to be a parole officer six years ago. I said, okay, that explained everything. So that, that that showed me everything. But I took her outside to the building. I said, but you see that right there in, the, in the, that big that big banner? It was one of those light, lit, lit up banners. So I, I said, I'm about to get one of those. The guys, he's going to have it up um, by Thursday this week. She said, okay, well, as long as you have that up by this Thursday and email me a picture, then I, I'll go ahead and issue the license. I'm like, okay, I try not to show excitement, but I was like, okay, you know, and so I went ahead, she said, show me this, show me that, show me this, show me your classroom, show me, is this six feet apart, show me this right here, where is your, this, this is the thing, guys, I want y'all to hear me close on this, she asked for the student enrollment package, and she asked for every document that was within the blueprint and my wife stayed up all night long printing everything out and and and, and the blueprint has a, a a text and copy it got a pdf file and it also have a copy and paste so we copy and paste our name our information and we adjust it to our region and we all we did was show her everything that was in the blueprint we flipping pages flipping she said you know what you are ahead of way. I just did it. She said, I just did a Douglas Shea school and they wasn't in order the way you was. And that's a big chain. If y'all know about Douglas Shea and, and Paul, she does Douglas Shea and Paul Mitchell. I was the first independent uh, school that she done. And she was blown out of water by how thorough and how uh, 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 prepared I was. And, and it was all, because of the blueprint. I'm trying to tell you, if I would have done it on my own, I, I'm not gonna lie, I would have failed. You see what I'm saying? I'm not even gonna, I ain't gonna boost. I would have failed and I would went right back to cutting hair. I would I I, I lost my momentum, I would lost my drive and I would went right back cutting hair and been one of those coulda, shoulda, woulda's and would watch the trends, watch these videos and watch you know, all the millions of people saying, oh, I got my financial aid, I got my government funding, I'm on my third school, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, you know what? That could have been me. But nah, I kept on moving. And it all it, it all boils down to the blueprint. So again, Chen, I want to thank you, man. Okay, well, uh, you sent me a video. Can I show them that video of your school? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let me see if I can make this bigger on here. Uh, I, I want to make this bigger. I don't uh, know if they can see it because it's kind of small on this screen. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? I know what I'm going to do. See if I can download it. Well, I click download because I want them to see your school. Uh, hold on. 
If you double click, it'll blow up. I'm double clicking. There it is. Thank you. So let's start at the beginning and walk us through it. Go. All right. This is the entrance Legacy Barber College. Again, I want to leave legacies. And this is where she wanted all the license at. That's my COVID-19 information that I got, my mask, the shield screens. This right here, you hold on, pause right there. You see that all work is performed by supervised students? That's yeah. in the blue, that's in the blueprint. All I did was copy and paste and blew it up at Staples. And and this is my price chart right here, that legacy. Boom, right there. That chart right there. That chart right there, boom, it's in the blueprint. All I did was put my logo on top, went to Staples with I uh, went in Canva and created a border and boom, put the same thing. That's my PPE stuff for the COVID-19, for the executive law. Yep, these are my chairs. You see the brown paper bag and I ain't open up yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and that's the student kit. And hold on, pause that. Take that back for a minute, uh, Chin. Go back. Go back, just a second. Yep, you keep on right there. That's good. You keep on. All right, bam, right there. You, over there, you'll see like a mannequin head. When you turn back over there, you'll see a mannequin head and you'll see some boxes and some tools. That right there was my student uh, kit that they that they needed. And everything that's in that kit that's on, a, on that station is in the blueprint. All I did was just check it. And, and they also got vendors where you get the information from. So I, I, I called the vendor up and made a contract with them. And I'm on board. And these are the custom cabinets that uh, my guy made. I did it off just by haircuts. The black he had guy. some. There was all tan at the beginning. We custom them. We sand it down. And inside of it got the UV sterilizer box. That sink right there, that black sink, go back mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah. Boom. Pause it. All right, that chair, that black waiting chair that's all the way in the back. Now, it was a lady on garage sale. I found on Facebook garage sale. She had four boxes of those. She sold them for $40. And I'm like, yep, I take all three of them. That, that sink right there was a trash sink that I got from Habitat store. It was all white. I sanded down. I painted it black. All it cost me a, a can of paint. And, <laughs> and the plumber, he plumbed this wall right here. That wall that's up, it wasn't a wall. There, in my guidelines, I got to have a wall to separate the classroom. So, again, I, I had a contractor who had three sons. I said, I tell you what, for the for the next three months, I'll cut your hair and your son's hair for free. And that's what I did with this wall that's up right there. You can go ahead. The, that right there was already in there. The cabinets was in there. The backwash was in there. The sinks. It was already in there. And I'm only paying $500 a month for this whole building. And this is the plaza, the <laughs> highest plaza. There's four apartment complex beside this plaza. There's Secretary of, State, Tech, Secretary of State across from it. And then there's a trailer park. And then there's an elementary school. And the elementary school saw me going in and out. And he knows me because my kids go there. And he said, what can I do to help? I said, you can bust your children over here in the school when my students get here and I give them free haircuts. He said, say no more. I'll make sure that there'll be a special bus coming from the Boys and Girls Club and from my school, I and mean from the elementary school to go to your school to get a haircut. Yep. Yep. Man, a lot of hard work in there, man. This is the classroom right here. I made a classroom because again, this was just all open space. I got that off of Uline. Those tables I got off of Uline, off of credit. I still ain't even paid nothing for it yet. I, st I mean, I, I, I got through inspection just off of credit, the blueprint, as well as cutting hair. Yep. Chairs, the tables, chairs I got from uh, uh, Lowe's, $10 a piece with the cushions. 
the fold up chair cushions. Man, the lady and the inspector, she loved it. She loved it. She's like, man, I love this classroom. Yep, you can go ahead. Skin chart, order Amazon. Restrooms. The people just put a new floor in the restrooms. Yep. Time clock. You already got the time clock with the fingerprint in it. That's a must when you go to an inspection. The locker room, cabinets. That's the staff locker rooms up top, and 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 I got the other locker rooms on the side. Yep. So that's three chairs on that wall. One of my clients drew that picture for me as a gift, and he did all my paintings on my wall. Yep, iron sharpened iron. For, oh, oh, yeah. You see that? This, those, those chairs I got, I got off of Alibaba. There was like a hundred a piece, and, I, and they got them shipped to me. And you see that sink over there? I know y'all probably think like, what the heck is that? Yeah, that sink right there. That's a portable sink because my my state requires a sink by every two stations. I did not let no stop me, no matter what. No. When I hear no, that's like my vitamin for me to keep on going. No is my vitamin. When I hear no, it's like, oh, it must be another way. So, yeah, so that portable sink, she said, you don't, you only got one sink out here. I said, no, no, I had two sinks. I just didn't know, you know, um, where you want me to have them out and display in the middle of the floor for the testing. But this is where they go. This is where it's supposed to be at. So I, the portable sink I had in the back just in case I needed another one. That portable sink only cost me $169. Amazon. Yep. That portable sink saved my life. Yep. Hair dryer. I got the hair dryer off of uh, a garage sale. Fifty dollars. I tried to catch Chin when he when he was selling stuff, but it was too far for me. Yep. There we go, right there. Yes, sir. Man, great feeling. Great feeling. And this is this is the lettering on the door that I had put on there, right there. Boom. She said she wanted the barber collar six inches big, so it wouldn't fit on the door. So I got it above uh, uh, on my uh, on my uh, my front front uh, view of the school. So, you know, it's all about legacy. So, you know, I dedicate that to my mom because legacy is something that she left me. She left me a legacy internally. And so, you know, I want to leave a legacy internal and externally. So my whole bloodline be straight, you know. Thank you, Chin. Oh, thank you. Because you're going to inspire a lot of people, Gerard. When they, when they see your story and hear it on Facebook, YouTube, the goal is to get a thousand minorities mm. in schools. And when Ms. Velma said she was retiring, I asked her if I could continue on this okay. program. I said, because I want a thousand minorities. Actually, I told her my exact words. I said, I want a thousand black people, but it was actually minorities because I wanted blacks and Hispanics to be able to open schools, to leave a legacy, have financial freedom, time freedom, to change their families' lives. Uh. And, um, <clears throat> You did it. Man. We got a lot of questions. Oh, sure, uh, sure. Well, when you, I, let me see. So when you were looking at the blueprint, what were you thinking? Because I know you would see me or, and stuff. So what was going through your mind? Uh, when when um, I actually got the blueprint, I had no idea because I had got other courses. Um, and when I got the courses, it was not as thorough, and it, it just didn't click, and it didn't match up to what they were saying. So I was like, man, please don't let this be another one that's like that. Please, please, I can't afford wasting no more money. I'm not rich like that, you know what I mean? And But that was, that's what was going through my mind. 
really worked for me, you know, because I always see videos and different things like that and saying how it worked for them. But I'm like, man, yeah, that's them, though. But it got to be another piece that they're they're missing out that they're not telling me because I'm trying. But, yeah, that's that's what it was. I wasn't sure if it was for me, but when I saw it, and, yeah, and I showed my wife because my wife is an admin person. I'm I'm a I'm a go getter. You know, you got you know administrators and you got the other type of people that just go in the field and that's me. So what what did you think about all the paperwork? When you got it online, your link and you clicked on it and it opened up and you saw everything. So what was that like? It was like heaven. <laughs> that's what it was like. It was like heaven. It was like, man, this has everything that I need. And I was going through it, I'm like, but it don't got this though. And then when I went to the next one, I'm like, oh my God, they got this plus some. I'm like, oh snap. I'm like, baby, look at this. And then we still we still navigating. I ain't even go all the way through it. I had to stop it because when you get on one thing, you're gonna start doing some researching and you're gonna start digging and you're gonna start and the next thing you know it, you go, you're gonna be up. You're not gonna you're not gonna sleep. You're not gonna sleep because there's so much wealth of information in this stuff. And it's just like, oh my God. I was I was impressed. I was impressed, you know, because one. I didn't know Chin. I, I had no idea. I never met him. And I, I I pulled my credit card out to buy the program off of faith and off of hunger and off of drive. And when I saw them documents, I'm like, this 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 man got it together. So yeah, I was I was blown away. And, and it's it's Miss Bella's blueprint, because I can't take credit for this. I mean, I was the first Afro American in her program. This is she's 71 years old now, a white wow. lady. Um, she's my best friend, but uh, she's been in the business over 50 something years. She's graduated thousands of students, um, wow. helped over a thousand school owners. Um, many of them were Caucasian, you know, and then once I got in it back in 1998, I started telling every minority that I could, but uh, it's her program and I thank God for Ms. Velma. Now, <clears throat> what research did you do beforehand? Cause I'm sure you had doubts in your mind. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I did. I did some research, and I, I um, I talked um actually to my previous school owners, uh, and I'm like, one day I want to open up a school, just just doing it out there and see what they're gonna say, see if they was gonna help. Oh, you don't want to do this? It's too much paperwork and the IRS. You don't want to deal with the IRS and all this. It scared me. I'm like, oh okay, that that sounds big, and I'm like, I don't want to fool with that. I, I don't like the IRS. So I'm like, you know, I asked other people and this and the third. And one day, I can't remember exactly who it was, but I think he's from either Tennessee or Chicago. Um, he would, uh, Chin had interviewed him. And when I interviewed him, he was like, um, how he opened up his second school and his story. So I'm like, I hit him up instantly. I'm like, hey, man, do you mind telling me your steps on how you went through it and, you know, how it worked since you worked with Chin. So I, I just started talking to people that Chin was interviewing and I, I, I picked that brain and I'm like, man, he's, he's a guy. And then I ran into some people who I was trying to get research from and they said, oh, I got it from Chin. I'm like, man, Chin was coming from everywhere. Chin, 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 Chin. I said, okay, there it is then. Okay. Um, let me see, we got some questions here. Yeah. Let me look. Uh, now we got Takinya on here. I see her, she has a school down in Georgia. She's doing really well. Okay. I'm gonna go through the questions. Big ups, okay. big ups. Uh, okay, what would you recommend for somebody that's wanting to open a school, that's thinking about it? Well, I would recommend um, for you definitely to, to do it for one, you know, I don't know your situation or your position that you're in right now, but uh, financially, if you're able to do it, I would suggest you to do it right now, being the season that we're in. And I will follow up with Chin immediately. I mean, immediately, because had, had I done that maybe four years ago, I would have my accreditation and I've been, I've been sitting on some meals, easy. So were you scared about anything or had doubts? <clears throat> um, 
Yes, I, yes, yes. I, I think the only thing I was scared or afraid of, I was afraid of, man, what, what if it don't work for me? Because, again, I'm, I'm the first black barber. Well, I'm, let, me, let me put it like this. I'm the first black barbershop owner in my city. And now I'm about, well, I am the first black school owner in my city. So I had doubts of failure. Like, you know, I don't have a team. I'm like, man, what if, what if this all fell and blow up in front of my face and I become the laughing stock? You know, so that was like my, my thing, not being prepared enough or not really knowing the right season or time. Okay, so now that you're open, <clears throat> um, it'll take two years, you'll be able to get the GI Bill. Okay. Okay, so rehabilitation, that's the military money, then people that have any type of disability, whether they're uh, blind in one eye, one leg is longer, anything mental, physical, health, or dependency, then after you've been open 18 months, you can apply for your accreditation. Oh, okay. And then accreditation is gonna take 12 months. So basically, Three years from now, you'll be getting twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars a student, and the government will be wiring that money to your account. So two years from now, anybody in the military, if your tuition is fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, they're gonna wire that in one payment to your account. Now, Workforce Investment Act (WIA) they have that in some states, um, and if you can get that the first year. Uh, I know Cynthia Stay Ready Nail, she's in Houston, Texas. She's getting it already. Now they have the SNAP program. Yeah. You, that if you know about the SNAP program, yeah. where the students can get financing. So I'm going to send you that in case you don't, because uh, okay. somebody had asked about the accreditation. Now, how much are your haircuts? Uh, my barber, previously or right now? For the school, because I know in the shop there, how much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the shop, they're twenty five dollars. In the school, um, it's uh, I think I got it at nine dollars. Okay, almost half price, a little bit less than half price. So yep. you're better to target a lot of the kids, single yep. parent moms, college kids, high school kids, just people on the budget. That's really yep. going to help them. So that yep. clinic floor, your uh, rent is five hundred, right? Yeah, for the first year, the second year, it'll be okay. uh, seven hundred. So basically, you need to do fifty five haircuts. To, for 500, to cover 500. So that's basically, um, you got to do about 14 haircuts a week just to cover the rent. <laughs> and the students, they don't get paid, right? Right. So all that money from the clinic floor goes to who? School owners. Goes to you. Then you get your vending machines, sell your product, do your advanced classes for the barbers and stylists out there that don't that want to learn certain kind of advanced techniques. All that money goes to you. Then you get your clippers and books and all that stuff wholesale because you got the vendors in there, sell it to them retail. So there's a lot of ways that you'll be able to generate money. At your barber shop, was it commission or booth rent? Uh, it was it was uh, booth rent. Yep. Okay. Rent. Um. So now. At the school, that's like you having a shop per se, but you have all of them doing the work and they don't get paid anything. Because right. a lot of people want to know, well, how are you going to survive? And you you can still do your clients. Yeah. But make sure, like Ms. Velma taught me 22 years ago in 1998, have a student standing next to the chair. Charge your clients regular price, but them students standing next to the chair. If State Boy walks in, guess what? Gerard's just doing a demonstration yeah yeah so you ain't losing you you still gaining yeah yeah i like that so um let's see if we have some more questions and you can keep talking gerard yeah yeah so again you know i i was i was blown away because at the location that i'm at right now um there's a big area parking i had an issue with my parking before now i have uh, there's over 70 slots of parking, parking, and there's a laundromat within that plaza that bring buses of you know um, Latinos there to get their their clothes washed. And there's a lot of people that sit there, and I'm like, I'm just out here looking. I'm like, this is a gold mine. And then I'm looking. They have like an ice cream parlor 
where the line is all the way down to the back. And then they got a miniature golf course within the plaza. And then they have a East Coast Deli, a Coast to Coast Deli sub shop. And and then, then they have a, a, a church in this plaza. So I'm like, this is going to be easy for me because I'm thinking of me just cutting hair, how easy it's going to be. But now I'm looking, and then there's over three or four acres of land that's in front. And he's telling me, like, if you ever want to do an event, you know, like a grand opening or back to school event, just let me know, and you can do that event for, for free. So we're already planning a, a back to school backpack giveaway for my nonprofit side. You know, we're going to do that, and we're going to ha have all barbers on deck at the, at the, at the school that's going to pass out business cards, and they're going to have a business card where when you return this business card back, you get a free haircut. And they're going to get a free haircut that day because we're giving back to the school, and we're going to have the press and the media out there to market and advertise it. And they passed a... Back when I had my schools, I would go to different churches and give a scholarship in the pastor's name, and they could pick out someone amongst their church, whether it was a single parent mom or some kid that just graduated from high school that they felt wow. was a good candidate. So the pastor would announce it, you know, and that gave him status and made him feel good. Oh, wow. And then um, all the members, you know, he would announce it, and all the members that got haircuts at my barber college. I would donate 10% of that money as a tithe back uh, to the church. Ah, uh, I like that, mastermind. I like that. So that can uh, help you a lot, too, on that. Okay. So um, you did what you could do, and God did what you could not do. Yes, he did, man. Like, yes, he did. Because I, could, I couldn't believe it, man. I, I really couldn't believe it, like. It took, it's like hitting the, hitting the lottery. I'm like, it took me a day just to gather it all in that I'm a school owner. And and then now it's like, okay, it's getting real now. So, you know, we about to, you know, get it in, about to get it working, get it moving. And, you know, it was a blessing because I, I was about to push it back because I had a car accident on the 1st of July. And I told him my Yukon Denali and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, how in the world am I going to make it? I'm like, I'm just going to push it back. But I just had my wife, she stepped in and, you know, and, and helped me get what I, what I, what I needed done. But um, I would tell, I would tell you guys, and I mean, make sure that you put God in center of everything and make sure, you know, if you marry, you know, make sure that you involve your partner. You know what I mean? Cause that's a big key. That's a big asset. You know what I mean? Having, somebody in your corner to assist you, you know, in the process. So your wife was, what, what can you tell us about your wife? Man, she's, she's a, she's a, she's a mastermind. She's a, she's an affiliate for Zoom. So that should, I mean, uh, not Zoom, but uh, Wix um, uh, websites. So that should let you know that she loves administrative stuff. So she's like the, she's the missing link of me. Like I said, she's the administrator and I'm the operator. And so, you know, and she does all the paperwork. Like, there's a system that's also in the blueprint that um that when you when you buy this package of the school, um, and it has all the software. Uh, it keeps their forms and excuse me forms together, like their registration, their progress report, their um attendance, um, you know, state board requirements that they need to dish out to them. All of that is in the software that's in the blueprint, and we had training with them, and they got us situated and, and informed. And she lined that all up, and it, it's integrated with our, our our time clock system, and and everything is integrated within um, their their state board. What they need, the student ID, everything, and we went through our training already with the smart program, and it's just like, man, and and it's better like. Most schools don't have what you got already. Like, keep on doing what you're doing. I congratulate you. And I'm like, man, this is just an inspection. So I'm like, man, I'm like, I, and I, I took it for. I'm not gonna lie, I took I took it for granted at, at the beginning because I didn't know the value that I had within the blueprint. And so I started digging it more and more and more and staying up and looking at it with a, with a different eye. It's just like it's just like the Bible. I'm a man of faith. So it's just like the Bible, like one scripture, you know what I mean, don't hit you, 
until you really in that situation, then you're gonna re, it's going to get revealed. And then you'll be able to see like, oh my gosh. And then you're like, man, that was there the whole time. So you got a lot of stuff that's not hidden from you, it's hidden for you. So, and, uh, and I realized that. That blueprint that Ms. Velma put together, if someone purchased a Paul Mitchell school, um, they're going to come out of pocket out the gate $1.6 million. Woo! They're, that's without the building or anything. They're going to give them those documents that you have, and they're going to tell them first, study these documents. Then they're going to have to go buy, get their own building, and they're going to have to equip it the Paul Mitchell way. So they're going to be out of about close to $3 million, and then they're going to pay $10,000 a month for consulting coaching, mentoring each month for a Paul Mitchell School. So that information that you have is about probably 3,000 documents. Yes. Um, that's what's in there. That's what you have. Uh, but a lot of people don't understand all those papers, what they have. And it's yeah. updated every year whenever they change. Um, anything else that you want to share um, with the viewers? Um, what I, what I would say, um, I think I saw somebody in the box who said that they was thinking about, um, opening up a school, man, I would, I would tell you to open it now. Again, um, I'm going to tell you the reason why my, my school is 1200 square feet, right? So I can hold about seven students, but I'm, I'm going to keep a revolving door. So when those seven get on the floor, I'm going to bring another seven in. And I'm going to keep it going. So we got it where it's about 124000 uh that we'll make from our projections. But this is a key thing. Now, we're in a pandemic, and I thought that was going to hurt me. But when I talked to my state board rep, she told me, um, you're, you're able to do online classes. And I'm like, online classes? Before I get too excited, break that down to me what online classes mean. So she broke it down to me. And so I can get everybody in the state of Michigan to do it online, get the money coming in, keep it flowing, and set up uh, a certain time for a certain shift to come in for that practical to get ready to do that state board when they got to go to the state board and just keep the books real tight and be able to flow like that. And they can do it right on, on online. And with the system that, that's in the blueprint, you can be able to track and they can clock in from an app on a phone from one of those links that's in the software that's in the blueprint. And when I look inside that and I seen that, I said, everything's in the cloud. There's stuff even in the cloud. I'm like, no brainer. It's, it's a wrap, you know, cause I got a friend in some state board um, that got, owns a school and they got to clock in the zoom every week to do that, their, their online course. And their training, I mean, their online training for school. So keep that in mind. You know, don't let the pandemic scare you. You know, sometimes that in the recession type deal, what, what some people think is a recession, that's the way that you can come up. Other people are thinking of ways to make money. So I just want to leave that. Yeah, to them. It's not a recession for everyone. Uh, Albany right. Academy to Kenya and Albany, Georgia, she does online. Uh, Sharonda Bowman, she's a student right now. Uh, Yanni Red wanted to ask you about locks. So are you going to teach them how to do locks too, or? Man, absolutely, absolutely. What in in my school? What I'm what I'm teaching is yes, you can get your basic, you know, your fundamentals of haircutting and everything and stuff like that. But I'm I'm adding uh, dreads in there because again, another key where I'm at, I had three colleges um, in my vicinity that's 10, 10 minutes apart from the school. And I get a lot of people from Florida, and I got a lot of people that, that come from Texas and other places, and they got locks. And they're like, where, where can I go to get my locks at? I don't want to send them to Detroit an hour and 40 minutes away or Toledo another hour almost away. So, you know, I got people that's going to be teaching locks. I got a loctician that's going to be in there that's going to keep oh, going to teach locks. I got businessmen that's going to come in and start teaching real estate. They're going to teach um, how to franchise a building, once you get it, because we're just like McDonald's, you know, you know, it's not about the burgers, it's about the, it's about the real estate. So once you own a building, you can be able to have somebody in that building. They're in that building, and now you can slap now hiring 
four barbers. Now those barbers are paying you, and you never turn on a clipper at all. You the landlord, and you get booth rental from them. So we teaching them real estate, and we're also teaching them life skills, etiquettes, different economical things that they don't teach you in school, credit, insurance. So it's actually really building a legacy. So we don't we don't want you leaving out of this place without having uh, no goals or no vision. Because when you leave here, you're going to have a, a 750 credit score or better. So, yeah, we, we have everything in here. Everything. Um, and Yanni Red has an online lock course, too. So you can reach out okay. to her um, and network. So, What's her last name? Uh, on Instagram, uh, Yanni Red underscore Dreads. But I'll hook you all up. You can do it. Because that's Bet. the thing. We got to all come together and help one another. Yes, if, I would love that, Yanni. That, can't nobody stop us. There's more power in the fist than the finger. Uh, so um, we can all help each other. <clears throat> um, so you're going to be teaching them everything. They're going to come out a business person. Business. Like, like Jay-Z said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business, man. You know what I mean? So that's, that's my motto, you know what I mean? Because you might, you know, on, on my door, um, when you had uh, uh, shared it a while ago, it says uh, a good man leaving the Harris for his children's children. So you cannot, you know, I, I, I got tired of going to my homeboy's funeral and stuff like that and talking about, man, you know, he he was the man. I'm like, yeah, but what did he leave? Heartaches and pain and his kids run around fatherless. So it's like, you know, we got to break the narrative, man. We got to be, be better than that. You know what I mean? We got to really leave a legacy because we – Truthfully, we're in the middle of a civil war. And I'm like, if we don't we train our men and our our men to treat women how they need to be treated, we we gonna mess up. You know what I mean? The curse is still gonna, you know, perpetrate to the earth. So we really we really gonna teach you how to change the narrative. Okay. Um, is it any let me make sure we don't have any questions. Okay, now. <clears throat> Anything you'd like to leave the viewers? Because I'm going to put this up on YouTube, Facebook, everywhere. And it's going to be some man or some woman that's thinking about going to the next level. Um, they're probably working in a shop. Um, did you want to hit on that, how it was working in a shop and owning a shop? Uh, sure, sure. Um, again, like I said, I saw, just like you watching, Right now, I saw some videos, and I saw the testimonials, and I saw the numbers, and I saw how they level up, and I'm still behind the chair, and I'm, I'm dealing with a whole lot of frustration from certain clients and different things like that. And I had to sit and think about it. Where am I going to be at the next 10 years? When I put it in the scope like that, and I didn't have a plan, I had to realize that I need to do something different. So... I would encourage you to do something different and don't feel like you're aborting your baby because your baby going to grow up and you're going to be like, Oh, but you still going to be my baby. That's, that's, that's what it is. You, you need to get in the program, get you a college and you got to think about it because you can impact and empower more people. You see what I'm saying? And that's the key to success to duplicate yourself. And you, you can be in the chair and you can go run the game with all oh, I'm the best barber. No, he's the best barber. Oh, she's the best hairstylist. All that. No, we, no, change the game. We're here to change the game. We need to level up and raise higher. The player got to elevate and be the coach. The coach got to run a franchise. How did you feel working in the shop? How did your body feel when you came oh, home? I had to get, I don't want to tell on my age, but my wife had to make me a, a Epsom salt bath. <laughs> And I had to put, you know what I mean, the Ezra salt in there. My bones were aching. And I'm standing up, you know, about nine to ten hours a day, you know. And sometimes as a business owner in a barbershop, <clears throat> I couldn't – you can't really depend on people like you want to because everybody's not going to have that drive and that hunger like you really want them to. And then when they call off and they don't show up and then they're late, it's a reflection on you. And not only that, you got to pick up the slack. And it was just too much time that I was missing out with my family. My family did was growing and, and I couldn't get to different places. And so I realized like, man, you know what? I got to multiply myself 
and I got to duplicate myself. So, yeah, I, I was I was hurting physically behind that chair. That's that's a num another reason why I had to pull out because physically my body couldn't take it no more. As much as I love to, my body couldn't take it no more. What was probably one of your worst days that you remember? Sure. It was this past October, November. It was like, you know, I, I felt my body felt weak. And I'm 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 in here thinking about the symptoms of COVID-19. I'm like, man, I went through that. That's what it felt like. And I couldn't even stand up. It took me everything to finish a haircut because I was drained and my body was aching. My body was sore. I felt like I was about to faint. And I'm like, you know what? I really, I can't do this. Like what, I, what happened if I did faint? You know what I mean? Then the whole business is in a collapse because I put too much weight on me and, and I felt it physically. So I would say October, November, you know, I was having, I began to feel pain in my left arm and my, my finger locked up on me in the middle of me doing a sheer over comb cut. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> and I, I dropped the comb and everything. People look like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, man, I just got stretched. You know what I mean? So I play it off. I said, oh, heck no. <laughs> I'm like, man, that thing locked up off me. So, so I'm like, okay, so I'm done with this. I'm not doing this no more. I am not embarrassing myself. And then, an hour later, you know, it did it again, and I put a ball spot in somebody's head. And thank God it was one of my friends, and he gave me a pass. So I had to Beijing, Beijing him up. I'm like, don't worry about it, bro. I got you. This is on the house. You're like, man, it's a hole in my head. I said, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, man, I'm sorry. That never happened in my life, man. Please, just, I'm glad you're not working. Just rock you a, a do rag. Put your hat on me. You're all right. Here's $50. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I never heard of this happening. Man, I I locked up, man. I locked up. I said, I'm done. <laughs> how, did, how was you feeling the day before the inspection? Because I know you text me. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. How did I feel? Cause you text me. Do you remember what you text me? Cause you're feeling a little. Yeah. How was you feeling? I was. I was nervous. I was nervous like a mug. Cause I'm like. And what did I tell you? Man, what did you? I think you said. Um. You said everything. Everything be good. Just go over the list. That's what you told me. I'm like. <laughs> that's it. I need some more, man. I got an inspection tomorrow. I'm like, okay. I said, baby, we're going to go over this all night long. She's like, baby, it's 1 o'clock. I said, I don't care. We got to go over this list all night long. So we went over the list. So that's and all they're going to do. That's all they can do. By law, the only thing they can do is go by that list. And if you deviate from that list, you're going to mess up. It's yeah. the recipe. They're going to follow that list. They can't do nothing else but follow that list. I couldn't believe it. I, I literally couldn't believe it because she literally – went down the line and step by step, precept on precept, she did everything that was on the list. And I'm like, you're right. She followed the list. And I'm like, Chin said, I told my wife, I said, Chin said, just go over the list. Chin said, go over the list. We're going over the list. <laughs> and that's what, that's all it was. And she was blown away. So she said, I'm happy, you know, that you got your license. Because she just literally did a Douglas Shea uh, school uh, three hours before, and you know that, and that made me nervous because I'm like, this is a big company, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, I was nervous, I was really nervous. But when she said, "All right, I'm about to email you your uh your license," oh, that was like the best feeling ever. I was jumping up like a little kid in the baby store, in the candy store. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm proud of you, Gerard. So thank you so much. What would you like to leave them with? Man, just encouragement. You know, I, I highly recommend you to click the link and go ahead and sign up. And don't be afraid. You know, I did it afraid. Don't be afraid. Just just be free. Just, just believe in yourself. 
and block, put on your blinders, put them horse blinders on and focus on your why. That's all I got to tell you. What would you tell them about the people, the voices that they hear, the, the naysayers, the dream killers? Did you hear any of that? Mm, mm, mm. Again, I am the first black barber and a shop owner and the first black school owner. So I heard a lot of stuff. But again, I had to close the door. I had to shut the door out. You know what I mean? I had to shut the voices out because a lot of people was, was telling me, man, you're not ready for a school yet. You know, it's that's too much weight. It's that's another league and that's different. You know, I, I heard it all. I heard everything, you know, and I, I got to the point where I just locked it out. I went in my prayer closet and I just prayed. I said, God, it don't matter nothing but what they say. If this is a season that you want me to do this in, and it's a time, I'm going to go by your will. And everything was laid up. So, you know, you know, find your why, not your what. You know what I mean? Focus on your why because you can focus on your what and you'll talk yourself right out of it. What about this don't happen? What if that don't happen? You'll talk yourself out, but focus on your why. All right, so tell them your name, how they can find you, and that'll be it. Okay, okay. Um, my name is Gerard Sturgis. You know, um, I go by G-Rod as my rap name, my stage name. But, again, you know, you can find me on Instagram at Gerard Sturgis. That's G-E-R-O-D-S-T-U-R-G-I-S. And, and you, can, you can find me on my website, GerardSturgis.com, or on my school website, LegacyBCMI.com. So th those are the ways that you can get up with me. But I'm I'm always on Facebook. I'm old school, so yep. And and again, thank you, Chin, for having me on this on this on this live, man. Appreciate you a whole lot, man. Well, I thank you, Gerard, for being so transparent and sharing your story because you're going to empower someone. You're going to change a lot of lives just by them hearing your story. It's going to give them the belief and faith that they can do it. Because all we have to do is see somebody just like us. Yes. Or see someone worse than us that made it. And if God did it for them, he'll do it for you. So this is just the beginning. Yes, man. Yes. And, and don't stop. I would tell, I would, don't stop. Because had I stopped because of what I didn't have, I would not have my license today because I almost stopped because I didn't have an instructor. I, and, and I got my instructor within two hours of my inspection. So had I stopped, I would have ruined it all. And I would, I would, I would lost my momentum and I would went right back behind the chair cutting hair. So don't stop. Don't stop. No matter what it looks like, don't stop. Well, may God continue to bless you. And we're going to see y'all at the top. So y'all have a good day. That's it. Peace Amen. out, everybody. Deuces.